This is heart wrenching. Well, these poor people, they don't know. They don't know. And I thought, I thought, the, and I thought this degree of corruption was restricted to American capitalists and others who were equally corrupt. This is absolutely unreal. Well, let's talk about the worst corruption. I have an article from December 2003 published in an international journal. International Network of Engineers and Scientists Against Proliferation. And this is on the Internet. Everybody should read it, and I'm going to send it to you so you can post it. It's called Radiological Terrorism, Sabotage of Spent Fuel Pools. And this is the blueprint for what's going on at, at that that re, those nuclear power plants right now. Um, so I looked at the fuel pools, and I looked at the reactors that are on fire and that blew up. And what I did was I found out that one fuel rod, which is a zirconium tube, it's called the cladding, is full of uranium pellets. It's about an inch in diameter and maybe 10 or 20 feet long. That weighs 1,200 pounds. The zirconium tube protects it from interacting with water, water or seawater or whatever they're cooling it with, and that prevents formation of zirconium oxide and hydrogen. So one rod is 1,200 pounds. It's 6% uranium-235, which is bomb-grade uranium, and that means it has 72 pounds of pure uranium in it, which would make four nuclear bombs. The bombs have a core of uranium or plutonium that's less than 20 pounds. And these rods are bundled into bundles called an assembly. So there are 60 rods in each assembly. In unit one, which is the first one that, that exploded, uh, there are 400 assemblies in the core. I calculated that in Unit 1, which is half the size of any other reactors there, because it was the first one, is the equivalent amount of uranium to make 96,000 nuclear bombs. Yikes. That's a lot of bombs. That's in a lot one, of bombs. In one reactor. And I added the uh, spent fuel pools how many tons of spent fuel, which is much more dangerous because it represents all of the fission products, which are very deadly, that form after a nuclear event, a nuclear fission process, a nuclear bomb explodes. And I found that 240 tons of those spent fuel rods are in, in three uh, cooling pools, that, guess what, Jim, they put the cooling pools on top of the reactors. No. Yes. Oh. So what happened is when the earthquake occurred, it damaged the pumps for the cooling, and those pumps for cooling are down by the ocean. Of course. Of course. And... Then the tsunami hit an hour later, and the backup diesel pumps are in a basement under the reactor. So that 30-foot wave went over the whole power plant and filled up the basement with water so that the diesel backup system wouldn't work. It took them until the next night, uh, 14 or 16 hours, to get the battery system working and cooling. And guess what? Meltdown starts 90 minutes after the cooling stops. And, 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 and the meltdown in this case of those rods is going to go right into the reactor. And, and, and the cooling and, system is beneath that. I mean, how, this is a very, I mean, it's a bizarre, happened, it's, a, it's, a, it's not just a Rube Goldberg arrangement, Lauren. It, it's a disaster waiting to happen. It was a disaster made to happen. Incredible. This is 
a secret nuclear war. And and a man on television, I have a Japanese uh, friend staying here who's campaigned against nuclear stuff, nuclear power plants in Japan for years. So he's been it, translating the news stories and the videos and everything that's coming out of Japan. And a Japanese man said in a TV news story, he was being interviewed, he said, this is the third nuclear war against Japan. The Number one was Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yes. Number two was the water into the reactor. It was already in meltdown, which means the zirconium uh, uh, tubes were ruptured by the uranium as it heated up it expanded and and ruptured those tubes when they started pumping water into the reactor finally when they got the battery backup system working half a day later um, the water reacted with the fuel pellets they knew it was in meltdown they knew they couldn't pump water into it they were desperate so they did it anyway and they did not poke holes in the reactor building to let the hydrogen out that forms when water reacts with fuel pellets. It forms zirconium oxide and hydrogen. So the hydrogen floated up to the top of the building, collected under the roof, and when it got down to the level where the fuel rods were in the cooling ponds, it exploded and blew the top off the building and damaged and cracked the pools so that they wouldn't hold water. The uranium rods burned down, the melted ones in the reactor burned down through the reactor shell shard, the protective uh, thing around the, the reactor, and, and all the water ran out of those holes. So this whole thing was a nuclear disaster from 90 minutes after the cooling stopped and that was right after the tsunami and they've been losing ground ever since this is unbelievable Lauren how could these have been constructed designed and constructed with so little foresight into the probable hazards they had to endure now, this, uh, Jim no engineer would ever build a nuclear power plant like that. It's insane. It's a booby trap. It's a radioactive booby trap. It's a killing machine, a depopulation machine. It's another form of nuclear war. The way they designed these reactors and the whole physical plant is total insanity. And the emergency responders at any accident are automatically become kamikaze emergency responders and out of the 50 who were held back from the 800 that they wanted to evacuate they kept 50 there uh, five of them are dead from radiation sickness 15 are sick and the rest are going to die yeah but what I'm saying is the population of the earth is only about six and a half billion people I know. So you're talking about more than enough to wipe out the entire population of Earth. That's already in the air. Entire population of Earth. The entire population of Earth. The entire population of Earth. I'm going to be sick. Yeah, but what I'm saying is the population of the Earth is only about six and a half billion people. I know. So you're talking about more than enough to wipe out the entire population of Earth. That's already in the air. Entire population of Earth. The entire population of Earth. The entire population of Earth. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. This is uh, Jim Fetzer, your host on The Real Deal, continuing my conversation with Lauren Murray. And I want to quote from her May 23, 2004 Japan Times article, Japan's Deadly Game of Nuclear Roulette, which you can find online. Ms. Lauren predicted, quote, It's not a question of whether or not a nuclear disaster will occur in Japan. It is a question of when it will occur. Like the former Soviet Union after Chernobyl, Japan will become a country suffering from radiation sickness, destroying future generations, and widespread contamination of agricultural areas will ins 
ensure a public health disaster, its economy may never recover. Loren, you seem to have hit that one right out of the ballpark. Uh, it's never going to recover. Now, you know, I just told you what Obama and, and Stephen Chu, the Secretary of Energy, have commented about this disaster in Japan. I want to um, read something about the hearing held in Congress this past week. Representative Michael Burgess, Republican of Texas, asked for detail about the radiation levels at the Japanese nuclear plant. Quote, are we talking about radiation equivalent to a chest x-ray, a CAT scan, he asked. Gregory B. Jasko, the chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, replies, replied, quote, levels that would be lethal within a very short period of time. Like 25,000 x-rays. Like uh, five of the workers, the emergency responders are dead already, and 15 more are about yes. to die. Yes. Harold Denton, a former senior official with the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, was faced with the Three Mile Island crisis holding daily news conferences. Talking about the situation in Japan, he said, quote, This is certainly far worse than Three Mile Island, unquote. But the Japanese are not rating it that seriously yet, but, we, but with each passing day they will see and be forced to admit the more than partial destruction of the northern part of their nation, which in all likelihood includes the Tokyo metropolitan area of 30 million people. They have just become part of the National Sacrifice Zone. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 30 million people, that's a staggering population to be devastated by, a, by a, an assault from radiation from these disasters. That's just unbelievable. Okay, let's just talk about In, how lethal plutonium is. <clears throat> uh, in principle, using the Atomic Energy Control Board's regulatory limits, we can calculate that a tenth of a microgram, that's a really tiny amount, of plutonium can overdose one person while noting that maximum safe exposure limits are placed at 0 0.56 micrograms maximum full body exposure. So a tenth of a microgram can overdose a person, but the limit the legal limits or the um, full, the maximum safe exposure limit under uh, AEC B uh, guidelines is five times that. And 0.25 micrograms for lung exposure. Quote, experiments with beagle dogs suggest that about 27 millionths of a gram of insoluble plutonium would be sufficient to cause lung cancer in an adult human being with virtual so certainty with significant risks probably associated with far lower doses. So how many doses do you think were made when Building 3, Reactor 3 exploded? A billion? I don't know. Uh, but according to the Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility, a tenth of a gram would overdose one million people. Oh, my one, God. One gram, ten million people, a hundred grams, one billion people, and six hundred grams, six billion people. And guess what? The there population is, of the Earth is only 6.5 billion. No, there's 35 pounds in one nuclear reactor. There's only about six and a half billion people. I know. So you're talking about more than enough to wipe out the entire population of Earth. That's already in the air. Entire population of Earth. The entire population of Earth. The entire population of Earth. I'm going to be sick. 
Yeah, but what I'm saying is the population of the Earth is only about six and a half billion people. I know. So you're talking about more than enough to wipe out.